Ladies and gents, welcome back. Canada is becoming increasingly a dangerous place for women, and politicians will agree with you on that sentiment alone, but won't get to the root of what is the novel reason for why things are becoming more and more dangerous for women in women's spaces, and that would be namely... Well, the ones that are now claiming to also be women. Here we have this case here on, this is from an article on the Post Millennial. Revealed, trans-identifying male accused of spying on girls in changing room at Nanaimo, BC pool is a convicted, I can't say this, I'm going to say nonce. Uh, I think this one apparently has been okay to say on YouTube. Uh, we, you know, have to pull out some new uh, language all the time. Uh, but this is, I think, we're going to move forward using this word here. And you can see exactly what the meaning of that word is because, well, YouTube does not like the other word that's being <laughs> used here. So, yes, uh, well, let's get right into this. A trans-identifying male accused of spying on girls in a women's changing room in Nanaimo, British Columbia, has been identified by local residents as a convicted nonce. In February, Jana Wright was a t was uh, threatened with arrest after confronting a male wearing a wig whom she alleges was peeking under her daughter's stall at the Nanaimo Aquatic Center, a male claiming to be entitled to be in the changing room on the grounds of human rights. Yes, that's right. You heard that correctly. The mom was actually threatened with arrest for questioning why this biological male was in the room and peeking underneath uh, the change room. Uh, Way Wright reported the incident to management was told that indeed the trans identifying male was male's right to be in the female changing room. Wright told Redux that the staff warned her that she could be arrested for removing the mail from the women's changing room. She then reported the incident to the police. Now, with the help of residents, Redux has revealed that the individual is a convicted nonce who goes by the name of Kylie Otter, sometimes spelled Riley or Riley. In 2019, at the age of 28, Otter was sentenced to 14 months in jail and 24 months probation for sexual interference against a young person. Otter confessed to touching an eight-year-old girl for sexual purposes on nine separate occasions. The abuse occurred between December 2015 and September 2016, while the nonce was in the, a, possession, a position of trust. The girl informed her parents of the abuse, who then reported to the RCMP Otter pleaded guilty to the charges in 2017, the convicted nonce began identifying as a woman in 2018. I wonder why. I wonder why. The, it seems that the gravitas is for individuals to want to gravitate towards positions uh, or places that they would be able to go in and do their nasty, nasty deeds. Now, a lot of people would say that the, the gravity used to be towards uh the Catholic Church, and well, that that has been the case in the past, and now in a lot of cases, it's moving towards either uh, positions in uh, public schools or, uh, well, the ability to go into female-only spaces, and this is the, the target of today's talk here. Police identify in another story, again from the post-millennial, here in Canada, police identify trans-identified male who assaulted resident at Ontario Women's Shelter as Cody D Dentremont. What a looker. What a looker. It really, really passes for sure. Here's that one. Police in Windsor, Ontario have located a suspect in an alleged sexual assault case that took place in a women's shelter on April 4th. On April 18th, Windsor police put out a call to the public for information regarding a suspect after a female victim reported that she had been sexually assaulted while staying at a women's shelter in Windsor, Ontario. These are supposed to be safe spaces for women at a women's shelter. This is this is where women go to be safe after uh, being in situations of abuse. This is unbelievable that they would let this happen. They would let predators in. Suspect who has been identified 
as a trans-identifying male going by the name of Desri Anderson was also residing at the shelter at the time. The victim alleges that Anderson climbed into the bed with her and sexually assaulted her. The suspect has been identified as 32-year-old Desri Anderson, who, who may also be known as Cody Detramont, or Dentramont. The suspect described as 5'7", 141 pounds, with brown eyes, brown hair, and probably a swinging member. This is uh, yeah likely to be the case. But this is where we are here in Canada. Now, some things are getting a little less crazy in this world, at least thanks to Elon Musk. Great news here, says Alex. This uh, is a step towards living in reality and having a po policy rooted in truth instead of emotion. Twitter remo removes woke policy against misgendering people. Now, there, this was a policy, and <laughs> this is this is a, a thing that was brought up even even when um, uh, Twitter's CEO at the time, Jack Dorsey, with his uh, with his cohort, was on Joe Rogan's podcast with. Uh, with uh, Tim Pool, and they brought this one up, and they said that this isn't this isn't a political policy. This is absolutely just you know normal. But this is this was the case at the time. They were in an echo chamber where they th they thought that this was actually something that was popular amongst all people. No, this is definitely that was a political policy. Now that is that moving forward. Now it, the craziness still continues in Canada. More articles from, and subscribe to the Post Millennial because they really seem to be going on this one. Ontario School Board cites women's rights, or sorry, human rights, when allowing explicit book genderqueer to remain on library shelves against parents' wishes. And now this is another one of those explicit explicit books that shouldn't be in the in the in a, the hands of children these are people that are sick in the head and they're trying to get themselves in the position around children and around women's only spaces quebec trans identified sex offender tried to cut off his own stuff on the eve of sentencing this is how sick we are and it just gets sicker and sicker and here we have <laughs> which has to be reloaded here Omar Algebra, our own government, and the government officials placating into this whole myth that women, the, the myth that women are having uh, trouble in, in uh, you know, normal spaces when the real trouble is in women only spaces in Canada. Violence against women still prevalent in our society. Hope, Hope in Heels is an event that spreads awareness on violence against women while encouraging men and boys to do their part of the solution. Of course, men and boys have to do this. More, We wore their signature pink heels in support of this important cause. I guess they changed the name. It used to be a mile in her shoes. Now it's Hope on Heels because uh, the virtue signaling couldn't travel an entire mile. Now, this is something that we should all really know in Canada is that women are not forced to wear heels to go to work or to do anything. This is not something that's actually uh, <laughs> the case. But if you want to feel for some people, you probably could feel for trade workers. You could walk a mile in their work boots because that's something that is definitely something that some Canadians definitely have to deal with. Of course, this is an old great clip from, <laughs> from Kids in the Hall uh, showing just that. Hey, you! You wearing steel toe boots? Yeah. Yeah? Testers! <laughs> now. Oh, this doesn't hurt. <laughs> Try walking a mile in those shoes, but hey, this is this is just my opinion anyway on that what that one for sure. But there is an epidemic of 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 violence against women and girls, and it's coming in girls and women only spaces when they're allowing people and predators to enter these spaces, and it's it's especially vulnerable because you don't have security cameras in in change rooms and washrooms. 
this is a, a, a real issue. It's a real actual issue. And politicians don't want to address this because they don't want to address the elephant in the room, which is the ideology um, that actually fuels a lot of their support. So anyway, leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think about the craziness. We thought that this was only this was only in the United States and in in the you know Hollywood and and uh, liberal cities down in America, but this is coming to even small towns here in Canada. And well our most vulnerable are paying the price for it. Leave a comment in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think. And we'll see you in the next one. Keep, in, keep on trucking. We'll see you tonight in, in the live stream. Anyway, keep on trucking.